Hey everyone, our family has a little bit of a problem. We have no coat racks in our house that are low enough for our four-year-old daughter to reach, and she likes to reach things by herself without help from mom and dad. However, I think the solution might be in this box. That's right, I was just sent another 3D printer to review, the LotMax SC10. Lots of ideas, maximum creation. And rather than doing another boring printer review, I thought maybe I could solve our family's coat hanger problem, design something cool that you guys could make, and check out this 3D printer at the same time. Nice thing to know about this 3D printer is it sells for around $300 US, so if you're thinking of getting into 3D printing but were a bit freaked out by the price of stuff, this is a very reasonable starting option, so if it works well, then that's fantastic. Is it going to be amazing? Let's open it up and see. So the first thing was to get it out of the box. Sounds easy, but it actually was one of the harder steps. In the top layer was a cute little 200 gram roll of filament and a box of assorted accoutrements. I'm sure those will come in handy in the future. Next the gantry comes out, but not all the way out, cause it's got some wires connecting it to the base. It took me a while, but I finally figured out if I took the foam out and then put the gantry back on top of the base, I could lift them both out at the same time. Once it was out, I needed to use four bolts to connect the gantry to the base. I couldn't just lie the printer on its side on a flat surface because there were like motory things and pulley-like things sticking out the side. But I found the foam it came in had a nice cutout just the right depth to keep everything safe. It was a little bit of a trick lining up the bolts with their appropriate holes, but eventually I found the holes and got them all screwed in. I plugged the two connectors with the letter Z on them into the only places they would fit. I also made sure to switch the voltage from 230 volts to 115. As I was doing that, I noticed the screws that hold in the power supply seemed to be moving, so I tightened those down as well. The heat bed was also a little bit wobbly, but that was easy to fix by adjusting the eccentric nuts on the right hand side. What wasn't quite as easy to fix were the nuts and bolts that were supposed to hold the spool holder on. It turns out the bolts were one size smaller than the nuts. Which is why everyone should have a jar of random nuts and bolts. I found some bolts with the right thread pattern that were just a little long. So I grabbed my jeweler saw and chopped them down a bit. You may notice one has a washer and one doesn't, cause the first one I cut a little too long. And the spool holder is on. Now that's a lot, Max. I inserted some filament, but couldn't get it to travel all the way through the Bowden tube. At first I thought it was this kink in the Bowden tube here, but it turns out it was actually stopping at the wire tie right at the end of the tube. Luckily the accoutrement box included some wire cutters and some extra zip ties, so I put both of those to use. I powered up the lot max and did some leveling. The SC10 has some preset positions for bed leveling, but the actual leveling is still done manually with the big old wheel screw thing, a piece of paper, and your own best judgement. Something that confused me and I didn't figure out why until later was that even though all the corners were level, the center still was a little bit lower. However, I didn't let that worry me and decided to start printing. I was immediately impressed with how quiet the motors for the X and Y axis are. Have a listen here. Obviously, it still makes some noise because there's the fans that make noise, as well as the filament feeder, especially when it's doing retractions. And actually, with the spool holder on top of the machine, the filament rubs against the top edge of the filament sensor and creates a really annoying squeaking sound. Which is why I ended up making this fancy invention called Toilet Paper Holder Feeder System. Anyways, my first test run turned out pretty good, and the flexible build plate was handy for being able to just pop it off. Now it's time to start designing something brand new. The program I'm using to design my steampunk coat hook is called 3DC Printing, which is basically a stripped down version of 3D coat made specifically for 3D printing. The reason I wanted to try this program is because I don't really like software where you have to pay on a subscription basis and 3DC printing is a very reasonable one-time payment, so I thought I'd like to try it out. 
It definitely took me a while to get my head around how it worked, but it is incredibly powerful if you know how to use it, which I don't really yet. It works using things called voxels, which sounds like it should be a cute little animal, but it's actually a cubic pixel. Because of that, it makes Boolean operations work really well. That's like where you add or subtract shapes from each other to create new shapes. Okay, so kind of what I'm thinking for this design is to have it in two pieces, so one piece that would screw right onto the wall, um, and then a second piece that would slot into the first piece, and that second piece would cover up the screws from the first piece. But the trick with that is making the slot and the piece fit perfectly so that it's tight enough that it doesn't come off when you're taking your jacket off or something, but also so that it's not so tight that if you want to, you can pull that piece off and unscrew your thing from the wall and move it without having to take a hammer to it. Once I figured I was happy with the design so far, I started printing off the dome-shaped piece on the LotMax SC10. The quality seemed quite good to me, though you'll notice the infill there is a bit funky. For later prints, I was able to clean that up by slowing down the infill speed. But overall, I was really impressed with it for my first big print. Unfortunately, when I popped it off the build plate, I noticed there were air bubbles that had formed between the top surface and the flexible backing. I did a bit of research and found that the recommendation was to flip it upside down, clamp it to the heat bed, and let it heat for about 15 minutes. It didn't make a huge difference, so then I took it off and did my best to work the bubbles out to the edge with my hands. I did this a few times, heating it up and then working the bubbles out. As you can see, I'm using special hand protectors because of the hot build plate. I went on to print one half of the hook part, which didn't seem to fill very well on the back, which made me think the nozzle was perhaps a bit far from the build plate, which also made me remember that when I leveled it, the center seemed farther away than the edges. I put a steel ruler across the heat bed and realized that it wasn't totally flat from front to back, enough that I could slide two sticky notes under the center of the ruler. I also noticed there was a bit of a lip around the heat bed, likely from when it was cut out or ground smooth. So I grabbed my file and ever so lightly just took off that extra little lip. That wasn't quite enough to solve my problem, so I also added two strips of paper right in the center of the bed. This way it brings up the center of the build plate just enough so I can level it perfectly. That's more like it. Here you can see what the first one looked like compared to what it looked like once I had the center leveled properly. At this point, I was pretty happy with how things were going, but I thought it still looked a bit more like a futuristic lawnmower than a steampunk coat hook. And we all know there's only one way to change a lawnmower into a coat hook. Some fancy swirls. In order to draw the swirls, I needed a flattened version of the side, so I got some help from some aluminum foil and some squishing. Then some cutting, and some unsquishing. Before long, I was happily drawing swirls in my living room. I turned those swirls digital and printed them off on the lot mass. Soon it was time to put everything together. I did a test fit without any glue just to make sure nothing had gone horribly wrong, and then got out my super glue and started gluing the two halves together. As you can see, I designed it with three pins to line everything up. I applied glue to the pins as well as to one of the halves, and then held them together tightly until the glue bonded. I put on some gloves, turned on my heat gun, and grabbed my swirls. If you remember my last project, I used hot water to mold my swirls. It worked pretty well, but it was very wet. So this time I figured I'd try out the heat gun, and it worked great too. This has got to be one of my favorite things about PLA plastic, is if you get it to the right temperature, it gets really nice and floppy and moldable, but still keeps its basic shape. Although this is a 3D printing project, I want my final result to not look 3D printed. And this is one of the techniques that helps with that, because you get those nice crisp edges that wouldn't be there if you printed it all off as one piece. I also wanted to cover up the center seam on the hook piece, so I made a little strip of rivets. A rivet strip. And then comes the fun part, the sanding. I wet sanded everything to keep the plastic from melting and to keep the particles from going up my nose. I used 80 grit followed by 150 grit and then I think 400 grit sandpaper. If you have a drawer with a stick in it, it might be useful for wrapping the sandpaper around to sand the flat areas. Once most of the sanding was done, I could glue the swirls to the sides with my super glue. 
Add my strip of rivets down the center of the hook piece. And one last little bit of sanding on the swirls. Now I'm ready to pull out my black paint and start painting. The only places I want to not paint are the slot in the dome and the sticky outy part on the hook. Once that was dry I pulled out my metallic paint and a finger and lightly applied it to the raised sections of the coat hanger. I used a small paintbrush with almost no paint to dab in the center of the lower spots. I slowly faded it out as it got closer to the edges to give it an antiqued look. And for a final coat of protection, I gave it a layer of Pledge Floor Gloss. Now all I had left to do was find a stud, screw the coat hook into the wall, and hire a professional coat rack tester. All right, Isabel, what have we got here? Bowling ball. What are we gonna do with it? See if the coat hang is strong enough to hold it up. Sounds good. Let's put it in a bag. Sure. Do you wanna help me put it on? Sure. There it is. Here, we'll even put it right like that so it's the most hazardous. And what's our result? Good. Good. It is good. Strong enough to hold a bowling ball. Yeah. So I am really happy with how these steampunk coat hooks turned out. They don't scream, I was made by a 3D printer, which is what I wanted. And I think that's thanks to printing them in different sections, taking my time to sand them and giving them a good paint job. They're actually strong enough to hang a bowling ball on, which I wasn't sure how strong they would be. Now I'm not saying that you should go hang a bowling ball on yours. It just depends on the materials and how well it prints, how strong it's gonna be. So don't hang something precious on these hooks until you've tested them rigorously. Okay, so here's my final thoughts on the LotMax SC10 3D printer. After using it to print out these guys, a bunch of ear savers and some other bits and pieces, uh, here's what I think. Would I recommend this printer? Definitely I would, especially for the price because it's around the $300 mark, as long as you're willing to do some tinkering when you set it up. I'd say a few quality control issues that I ran into on my machine were the kinked Bowden tube, the heat bed being warped, and the build plate having bubbles on it. As far as the Bowden tube, they actually have a spare one in the little accoutrements box you get with the printer, so I would have been able to repair that if I needed to. The build plate wasn't too bad. Once I actually got the bubbles out, it was fine. I printed lots of prints after that and they never came back, so I'm okay with that. The build plate, I did manage to get figured out with a couple strips of paper in the center, um, but I did mention this to LotMax and they sent me a second build plate as a replacement and I was very interested to see if this one was warped as well, and it is not warped at all. So whether my build plate is an anomaly or whether it is a non-anomaly, I don't know. But I do know that they have non-warped build plates as well. So, But aside from those few things and a couple adjustments I had to make in the beginning, this printer performed really well. It only took like 20 minutes to assemble and six screws. The build plate heats up really quickly and it's a nice large size. It's also flexible, so you can pop your prints off really easily. And I had no problem with adhesion on the build plate. The whole machine has a fairly small footprint and it's reasonably quiet when it's printing. And it seems to be made from parts that are very similar to or even exactly the same as parts from other popular printer brands. Which means that if something breaks on here, which things always break, I don't have to go to a specific manufacturer to get those parts. They're readily available um, and they're not too expensive. So big thanks to LotMax. They sent me this printer for free. However, they did not pay me to make this review or to say nice things about it. So everything I say is my own opinion and that's all. I really only have experience with one other 3D printer and it's a lot more expensive than this one. So, you know, take my review with a grain of salt. However, interestingly, I find myself printing with this one more than the expensive one because I just like it. So I guess that says something. I'll put some links in the description or the comments where you can find this thing. There'll be affiliate links. So if you do end up buying something, it's not gonna cost you any more and it's gonna help me out too. 
Oh, and of course, if you want to make these guys, I will have a link probably here and in the description and in the comments. And I think it'll be free for now. So check it out. You make yourself a coat hook. I know you want one. Thanks for watching. See ya. Well, see if this hook is strong enough to hold a bike, bike helmet. Yes. Let's see if this hook is strong enough to hold a hat. Yes. Let's see if this coat hanger can hold a mitt. Can. Well, it's called a rubber boot. Yes. Anything else you'd like to test? <laughs> I don't know.